Hey guys, today we'll be going through the information systems part of Senior Science. Uh, this is a part of the HSE course and I'll be going through the entire section 1. So this won't be the entire summary for the entire syllabus points of information systems, but it will be the section 1 of information systems. So let's start. Well, this dot point is about information systems and energy transfer. So our first dot point states, Outline the basic pattern of information transfer process as communication to both parties, message, transmission of coded message, and decoded message. So um, this is our basic model, and this is what we need to remember, that we initially have this code which is common to both parties. So I'm just going to write code common to both parties. And then this code gets encoded. Uh, through whatever method, usually electrical, whatever, and then after this encoded, uh, after this mes message is encoded, it then gets transmitted. Now, once transmitted and received by the other party, so it's going to get received by the other party. And once received, what actually happens is that that code has to be common to both parties. And since it's common to both parties, it gets decoded. And then, obviously, after it gets decoded, it turns back into a message. So that is our model. Now, nearly every single information transfer uses this model. This is a pattern that nearly every single one uses. So, okay, let's, let's move on really quickly. You've got dot point one point two, which asks you to identify a range of information systems used daily. Now, this is very simple. You just think about the stuff you use every single day to visit, uh, the, like just to uh, get information. So we've got talking, writing, video conferencing, AM radio, FM radio, smoke signals, facial expressions, sign language, local phone call, overseas phone call, photographs, email, paper and magazines, television, fax message. Now, you might ask, why is local phone call and overseas phone call a separate thing? Well, that's because the way they actually communicate is quite different, and that's why we've put them as separate. Same goes with AM and FM radio, and everything else is just the usual. Now, just something to aid this is later on we're going to be asked whether or not uh, it's verbal or non-verbal, it's short or long range, or it's electric or non-electric. Now, verbal means something which is uh, using uh, your voice. Just the best way to remember it, best way I remember it, is just something that uses your voice, something that you need to actually um, produce sound. There has to be sound present, some sort of you know sound present. So, if you think about it, talking, yes, that's verbal, and then we get down to short or long distance. Now, talking isn't really long distance because I can't talk to you um, when you're, you know, 200 kilometers away unless I'm using a separate information system uh, such as, you know, um, the internet as I am right now while I'm talking to you through this video, which is also an information system. But, um, yeah, I can't talk to you up close. I can only talk to you up close and can't talk to you very far away. Therefore, it is a short distance communication system. Electronic or non-electronic? Uh, it's not electronic. I'm not going to go through all of these because it should just be all general knowledge and something that you can easily remember. And you can obviously pause this video and look through these if you need to. This is from the Dot Point Senior Science book, by the way, if you guys ever want to find it. And I really recommend you guys to get doc Dot Point C uh, Senior Science because it really helps. Okay. 1.3. Now... We have to classify information systems as verbal or nonverbal, as I showed before, short distance or long distance, and electronic or non-electronic. So, in my previous picture, I showed you what potential systems could be verbal, nonverbal, and whatnot. In this one, I'll kind of just discuss what I mean by verbal, nonverbal, short distance, long distance, and electronic, non-electronic. Verbal info is organized by language, whereas nonverbal isn't. And verbal is concerned with words, usually spoken or written. Nonverbal includes pictures, dance, font, voice tone, emotions, etc. And it can be indirect presence of the receiver or via a device for nonverbal. Uh, uh, no, nonverbal, yeah. So in short, with short distance versus long distance, um, you guys can just pause this video and try to make this as fast as I can. And there's no real need for me to keep on going about short and long distance, electric, non-electric, because all this stuff should be quite uh, general knowledge. Okay. 
Okay, so we have to in 1.4 we have to recall the phenomena and events wh where you different forms of where different forms of energy are used. So let me go through every single type of energy that you really need to know. You've got light energy. So it's just like a light bulb. You know? So it's a light bulb and that's it. That's our light energy. You've got sound energy, which is like a little speaker. You've got mechanical energy, which is like gears. Sorry, really bad gears drawing. <laughs> but just imagine these two are gears. Electrical energy, which is the currents. So like, you remember you see the batteries, like that. And then you've got potential and chemical... Uh, uh, potential and chemical potential. So like electric potential and chemical potential. Um, when I say potential, it means that there's electricity there, but it's not being used. So just think about a, a light which isn't switched on. There's electricity present, and it's ready to be used, but it's not being used. So that's that's what that means. Kinetic. Now, kinetic energy is basically sound and light, but also any type of movement, anything which is uh, active. You know, something that's... Uh, Kinetic energy for us and humans would be like, you know, running around. Or it's kinetic, energy, kinetic energy could be just the movement of anything, or just vibrations in the air, or light. Those are all considered kin kinetic energy. You've got electromagnetic energy, which is our, one of our main ways of communication. You've got the radio, you've got, you know, a lot of things that use electromagnetic. And you've got radiation. So radiation, like the nuclear radiation type energy. But we have a lot of power plants which actually use radiation as a form of energy. Uh, well, allows us to distribute energy. So, you know, uh, that little radioactive symbol. <laughs> Sorry for the really bad drawings, but <laughs> just for fun. Okay. Anyways, for uh, w since we have to talk about these different form of energies, you might as well learn a little bit about how these energies go about in transfers. So su suppose electrical kettle or jug. You've got the electrical energy, and that turns into heat energy. So it's from electrical, which I said here, and that turns into uh, heat energy which I didn't write here, but heat energy is uh, just a different type of energy. But anyways, and then you've got toaster, which turns electric energy, electrical energy into heat energy. Solar cell, which is solar energy into electrical energy. Torch battery, where it's chemical potential, and that turns into light energy, Ke. And then you've got, finally, a uh, car using petrol as fuel, and that turns from potential chemical energy into heat and electric energy, and then finally kinetic energy. So these are all just examples, that nothing really related to dot point, just something to aid you into understanding this dot point. In dot point 1.6, it's required for us to discuss the advantages of using a range of information systems. So in information systems, specific systems can be suited to specific applications. As an example, FM radio information systems are also known to be unaffected by storms, and hence can be considered more reliable. However, AM information systems can reach wider audiences but are affected by the weather. These factors define uses for distinct information systems. So now we're going to deconstruct this dot point a little bit. It's asking us to discuss. What does that mean? That means positives and negatives. And then it's telling us we, we just need to discuss advantages. So we can cross out the negatives. All we need to talk about is the advantages. And we need to talk about the advantages of using a range. Range meaning something like um, a variety. So it, it's asking for a variety. And then moving on, it's asking for a range of information systems. Information systems as in all the ones we have just previously learned about. You know, the radio, you've got from, and that turns to AM and a FM. You've got, the tele uh, you've got television, you've got telephone, all these different things. And we can choose any one we want, but it's just we just need to have two definite examples uh, that we can compare against each other and show the advantages of each because that's all it's asking us. It doesn't, want us to ask, it doesn't even want us to discuss negatives. Okay, so let's just, just try that. Specific systems which can be suited. So we've got, in my example, what I did is that I talked about the AF, AM and FM radio. So if you guys don't already know, AM is amplitude modu uh, modulated, so amplitude And FM is frequency modulated. Just putting it out there. Anyways, 
these two things, um, there's actually quite a big difference. In AM radio systems, the weather actually affects how strong the connection from one point to another is and how good the quality will be. So in storms, AM radio will struggle, even though new technology has been making it a little better, but AM radio still will struggle under an intense weather, something which is like a, suppose a storm. Whereas in frequency modulated radio, FM, weather doesn't really affect it at all. So therefore, these two systems, there's advantages in each. And when I say advantages in each, I mean an AM radio, you can reach a very long distance, but you cannot actually get um, uh, reach that long distance under bad weather. And in frequency modulated, sure, it's a shorter distance, but um, it's more reliable, because even if there's bad weather, you can still reach people. So that's, that's all this dot point's asking about, and that's pretty much all you need to know. If you really did want to use a second example, uh, you could use the example of mobile phone systems where they have to reach a cell phone tower and uh, landline connected telephones which connect to satellites to send and receive information, which also does just lead to reliability. And we can just conclude it with like a simple sentence saying, hey, um, these information systems using a range is very beneficial and it's just something that you know allows for a reliable state of information transfer. Okay, let's move on to the next dot point. Alright, so in dot point 1.8, we are asked to gather and process information from secondary sources to develop a timeline of communication systems, introduce to society, and use the available evidence to analyze the impact of these systems on society, pretty much, and predict possible future directions in communication technologies. Okay, so these are the communication systems that I actually uh, ended up getting in a timeline. Uh, I didn't make, didn't make this timeline, this is from a secondary source, and pretty much it's it's suitable for this dot point. So, this dot point wants us to map out the years where everything major was created. So this is what it is. In 1450s, we had our first printing press. In 1660s, our first American newspaper. 1830s, the electric telegraph. 1830s, the Morse, gra uh, Morse code. 1840s, we had our first long-distance telegraph. 1870s, the electric telephone, and so on. And lastly, like if, if you just skip these uh, two other ones, in the 1990s, we had the internet, which was born in the US. So in this dot point, what I said is that throughout time, communication systems have remained an in integral part and an essential part of our lives. Language, as well as other forms of communication, were developed as a mean of su means of survival and cultural transmission. All of these systems reflected had a great increase in our ease of communication, creating an interlink society where communication communication to almost anyone is possible. So since this actually, well, let's just deconstruct the dot point a little bit. This is asking us to analyze the impact these systems have had on society and predict possible future directions in communication technologies. So these are the impacts that I came up with. These ones. And I said that, uh, okay, potentially these information systems, they can lead to job losses in many outmoded areas. It can lead to potential for job in creation in infotech and laws such as copyright registration, which cannot keep up with the current technology. Privacy and copyright issues with the internet SOPA, failed in I internet piracy bills. So just recently you had this massive controversial thing about SOPA and SIPSA, and they, they all tried to uh, censor the internet in some form or another, and they all failed, which is also something uh, which is also a societal impact. And you've also got, lastly, the feeling of frustration by information overload. The last one doesn't apply that much unless it's to older audiences, but it's still to the general society. So these are the things that I came up with. And for predictions for possible future directions in communication technologies, what you could talk about is um, perhaps something which is uh, a more portable, smaller, anything which is um, innovative in the sense that it allows for more things to be done, such as the um, the recent Android OS for mobile phones. That's a new information uh, communication technology, which is amazing. It allows you to run apps, just like the iPhone does. So like iPhone, the apps, the systems, the software. You could talk about a lot of things in this predict possible future directions. I don't really have it here, but um, just generally off the top of your head, that should be enough. And I'll just say make a couple of dot points and expand on them, and that will be pretty, pretty much in sufficient for this dot point. Okay, now moving on to the next bit. This is 